Hi, I'm Eve Mosher, and I'm pleased to be here as part of the It's Time Festival and joining you today on the Arts and Community Stage. So we're all here as part of this festival because our leaders decided not to convene for COP26 this year, and we're wasting valuable time. So it's really upon all of us to step into that space and make the change happen that we need to see in this world. And that's gonna take some courage and some imagination, but we can do this. We just need the courage to step into this moment and we need the imagination to be able to imagine a world wholly different from the one that most of us are inhabiting at this moment. So thank you for joining me in what I'm calling an experiment in courageous imagination. I've been working on climate change for almost 15 years since the first IPCC report came out. I first started working with climate change on a project called High Water Line. The first iteration of High Water Line was a six month long performative project where I drew the 10 foot above sea level line using sports field chalk around 75 miles of New York City streets and sidewalks. The intention with this project was to have conversations in the places that were to be impacted by increased flooding and storm surge because of climate change. At the time, we still have the opportunity to change the future. So part of my goal was to get people thinking about their own agency and power in making that change happen. So how could they be a part of the solution? From there, the project went on to occur in other cities around the world. I uh, collaborated with a woman named Heidi Quante, and we worked on the project in Miami and Bristol in the UK, where we worked with local community leads and those communities that were being impacted by storm surge and flooding. Then Heidi and I co-wrote a guide to undertaking high water line in your own community and some communities from around the world have undertaken that project, including Honolulu, Hawaii, Delray Beach in Florida, and most recently, Stockholm, Sweden. This project was really useful in understanding the transformation required to get people into a space of feeling courageous enough to take action on climate change. And that's kind of where my work now sits, is working as a facilitator to take people through this very transformation which is a process of confronting the truth, going through a process of grief and healing, and then moving on to imagination and action. And all of this takes courage. It takes courage to recognize the moment that we're in. It takes courage to step into our own power. And it takes courage to imagine a different world. I've gone on to use this sort of methodology of transformation through truth, grief, and healing and imagination and action to work with a variety of different communities on a variety of different challenges, including waterfront issues and stormwater in urban areas like New York City, to more recently extreme heat in Philadelphia. When working with these communities, we collectively grapple with the reality of climate change. We share stories of lived experiences we learn together about solutions and then we work collectively to create, advocate, and make change happen together. Creativity has a very interesting role to play in creating space for transformation. The arts are really good at telling the truth in a way that is both more relatable than often the science or media portray it, it's also capable of tapping into our emotional side, which can be what pushes us into action. Creativity is also really good at holding space to enable us to go through the process of grieving and healing. And through the powerful tool of imagination, we can begin to see what is possible. And when used in just the right way, uh, it, creativity can, as Joanna Macy says, break our hearts wide open to the beautiful world that is possible. And with that, I want to welcome you to what I'm calling a bit of an interactive experiment. And thank you for having the courage to step into this space alongside me. During this 
uh, talk, this pre-recorded talk, I'm actually going to invite you to do some drawing and writing and participate in uh, what I hope is a conversation that happens in the comment section. I'm going to be live with you when the video is aired so that I can participate in the conversation as well. So the first thing we need to do is to gather our materials. Feel free to get paper, then anything you're comfortable making marks with, pen, pencils. Feel free to grab colors, um, and I'll give you a moment to go get those materials and meet you back here. Welcome back. Let's begin again. We are, at this moment, standing at the crossroads of a world in which there are two paths. One path is that in which climate catastrophes continue unabated and the ecological collapse is preceded by our societal collapse. The other path, the one that will require courageous action and fearless leadership, is one in which we build off the already existing models for whole system transformation. And this is really key to understand that the solutions exist it just requires that we embrace them and learn to scale up, to adopt them in many different ways. So in this world, down this path, not only do we survive, but we thrive and prosper. We build relationships with one another and with the ecosystem in which we live. We learn from indigenous knowledge and the lived experience of communities around the world in order to create a future rooted in care and justice. At this moment, the future is unwritten, which means that you and I have the opportunity to write that future now and every day. So let's tap into our imaginations and begin to work on the future you want to see. So now is the point at which I'd like to invite you to take a mental journey through your neighborhood and to notice not only what is there now, but what could be. So first, close your eyes and imagine going on a slow and very deliberate walk through your neighborhood. Take the time to move purposefully, to notice the warmth of the sun or the coolness of breeze on your face. Open your ears to hear the sounds around you. Maybe it's the sound of nature, birds, leaves blowing in the breeze or moving water. Or maybe it's the sound of urban life, other people, cars passing you by, other noises of the city. Now, in your mind, see what is around you. What is up above and what is below your feet? And importantly, what are you passing as you walk? Move deliberately so that you capture all of the places, the people, and the possibilities that you pass. Make note of spaces that hold the potential for something new. Make note of spaces where creativity, cultivating, and growing are already happening. Make note of who and where are people in your community who are doing the work of healing, caring, and nurturing. Let your walk lead you back to this place and this moment. Slowly open your eyes and with your paper and mark making materials, draw or write about the walk you took. You can make a map, draw your path, make notes, use words that identify the world you noticed. Next, identify the places where you saw change happening or the spaces which held the possibility for change to happen and note what is the change that you can see or imagine. Here's an example of what I drew. First I drew the street space and the buildings and then I changed some of them 
The parked cars, I turned into open streets. The lawns, I shifted to farms. And across the street is a derelict lot that I transformed into a community space for a repair cafe, community gatherings. So we can get creative about how we're thinking about the spaces around us. Now I'd like to invite you in the comment section of this video, start with just one of the spaces that you identified and tell us what the change is that you're imagining for that space. Feel free to add more than one. Feel free to also borrow ideas that other people have written down and add those to your map or notes. And maybe the conversation that we're able to have will prompt new ideas. The next thing I'd like to do is for you to choose one of your ideas and think about what are the resources the experience, the knowledge, the creativity that you have that you could use to help this idea either begin, grow, or blossom. For mine, if I look at changing the parking spaces into play streets, what is the knowledge and tools that I have to do that? Also think about what unexpected ways you could help the possibility come into being. Creativity often is just looking at a problem from a different perspective and bringing your own resources to bear on that problem. Maybe you choose to draw images of what's possible in the neighborhood. Maybe you choose to use music or performance as a way to give life to the ideas that you have. Maybe you have concrete skills, gardening skills, things that you can bring to the spaces of change. And it's important that while we are thinking about these ideas, we actually take action. One of the asks with the It's Time Festival is that each talk ask that everybody take one action in their own community. And the action that I want everyone to take from this talk is to start on this idea, to start the process of making the change happen. So what is the first thing that you could do in order to make the change happen that you've identified? Is it connecting with neighbors? Is it finding a space who owns this lot or what are the rules around this and, and how can I actually break them? Is it thinking more about what resources you already have that you can bring to this change that you want to see? And I suggest that you go ahead and write it down. Sometimes writing things down helps us commit to things more. So if people would, wouldn't mind adding to the comment section the sort of what is the one action you want to take to make this change happen either this afternoon or tomorrow or as soon as you can um, in order that you can make change happen. I'm hoping that thinking locally allows you to see the possibility for change in the world that you inhabit and I think it's important to recognize that while what is required is whole systems change a lot of times that can start from the ground up. We certainly want the possibility to shift policy and shift our economic system, but if we start where we are, if we take small steps, but we continue to dream big, we can help bring about that change. In considering how the actions that we take locally can transform the world, we have to think about how these things scale up. So while right now your idea might be putting in one community garden. It might be just one, but from one we influence another. Or maybe you share your knowledge and so there's more and more popping up all around. So sometimes these small changes can actually have an impact and begin to shift policy because people can see what's possible. So changing your community can perhaps change the world. We are also at a moment where courageous imagination is required of all of us, that we step into the space that's needed to make change happen and we recognize this moment as a place where it's time for us to break our hearts and minds wide open to what is possible and to provide a path to a more beautiful world.